does mark day 103 of the war between Israel and Hamas. And just into our newsroom here, a prominent West Bank terror leader killed in an Israeli airstrike. The Israel Defense Force is saying that a terrorist cell headed by Ahmad Abdullah Abu Shalal was eliminated during a, quote, precise airstrike. Israel saying the leader was responsible for carrying out a number of terrorist attacks over the last year, including a shooting attack in a Jerusalem neighborhood last year and a bombing attack on IDF soldiers last October. Avraham Levine is an intelligence analyst over at Alma Research Center in Israel and a major in the reserves. Joining us now live to talk more about all of this and the latest developments on the war. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. My pleasure. All right, so first off, I just want to get your feelings, your thoughts here. Whenever you hear that a top Hamas leader, commander there, has been killed in an airstrike, what is the significance of each of those deaths? So I think there's two cases that we should be uh, speaking about. Uh, this instance is not a leader or a high-ranking uh, commander. He's an operational commander, and the significance is eliminating a concurrent a threat, a specific threat, which means to me that he was planning an attack. And in order to thwart the attack, uh, we had to uh, eliminate him and take him out of the picture. Uh, the, it's a completely different case when you go for senior ranking and has a strategic uh, targets. But this wasn't strategic. This was a tactical attack against a terrorist, uh, actually Fatah, not Hamas, from the Al-Aqsa Mortars Brigade, brigades uh, in the West Bank. And that is my question here is, is that part of Hamas? Is that connected there to Hamas? No, it's actually the, uh, the other party, other dominant party in the West Bank, part of Fatah. Uh, so anyone that had expectations of that's lean on the Fatah, the other party, as uh, the savior of the situation in Gaza or the West Bank, should uh, really uh, read the material and see there's terrorists on, in the Fatah and terrorists in Hamas, uh, and uh, and we everyone should remember that uh, when speaking of who should take control ne uh, next in the near future in Gaza. And I do kind of want to get your take on a story that we brought you as breaking news yesterday here on Live Now from Fox. And that was that Sinwar, the Hamas leader there, has been added to the terror list, the list of terrorists for the European Union. What is the significance of that move? We know that his assets are frozen now in all EU states, but we know the U.S. has always labeled Hamas in general as a terror organization. So what is the significance of that move and officially labeling him a terrorist in the EU? So uh, obviously a, a move in the positive direction against uh, Sinwanda and Hamas altogether. Uh, I think it's important to note that sanctions, uh, while being positive, a positive move by, uh, by the EU, sanctions do not stop terror. We did not stop Iran with the sanctions and the IRGC. We did not stop Hezbollah with sanctions uh, in Lebanon. And we will not stop Hamas with sanctions. They're only part of the effort in order to stop terrorists all over the world. And back out here live, an image that does show the Israel-Gaza border. Again, we are on day 103. The New York Times is reporting that the Hamas tunnels that are underneath Gaza could be significantly longer than originally thought. And we mean really significantly because they're saying they're possibly 350 to 450 miles long. Is that surprising and does it change anything? Well, I guess the figure sounds... Uh intimidating when you think that the whole Gaza, the length of Gaza Strip is uh, 25 to 30 miles, but it's not surprising to anyone that uh, that's in the, in the material and uh, has followed Hamas. And by the way, Hezbollah too. If you, if you think about Hezbollah as someone, uh, an organization that's multiplied by 10 the size of Hamas, uh, and Alma Center wrote a report back to August 2021 about the land of, of tunnels in South Lebanon and Lebanon altogether knows that strategic tunnels that allow Hezbollah to move 
weapons, uh, people, ammunition, underground, dozens, tens of miles across Lebanon, safely from our eyes uh, and anyone's uh, ability to affect it or stop them, knows that this can happen. Hamas is took over a budget of a small country, including the support from the Western world, and used it to create this trap, a battlefield of terror uh, against Israel, and that's what we're facing today. Is it possible at this point, months into the war here, that Hamas doesn't actually know exactly where all of the hostages are at this point? Well, if you take into account the multiple actors, official and non-official, that took part in the attack and the chaos of October 7th, it's, it's, it's possible that Hamas doesn't know exactly. But take into account, as you started with 103 days into the war, probably Hamas by now already gathered all the information and knows everything. Uh, I think Hamas should be held accountable 100 days after the attack for everything happening in Gaza. And uh, I think we shouldn't let them off the hook by saying they don't know or they're not able to follow. I think they already know everything by now. And the Biden administration is expected to announce at some point today plans to redesignate the Iran-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen as specially designated global terrorists. And the Associated Press is reporting the details from sources there as the Houthis have launched dozens of attacks on commercial vessels in the Red Sea. And the group says they've been attacking those ships in response to Israel's military operations in Gaza. Is that change as far as designating the Houthis as terrorists is that a big change for the U.S.? Does that change anything about the war itself? I think the, we should focus on the word global threat here, and I completely agree with the designation. Houthis, the Shiite axis, is not a threat on Israel alone. It's a threat all over the world, and uh, terror attacks that uh, and terror organizations that are terrorizing the Middle East uh, will not be contained to the Middle East unless we take care of it. So the, uh, the, the attack on the Houthis recently and the past days and the designation is a good beginning uh, towards stopping terror attacks by Houthis. Uh, we have to remember Houthis call to death to Israel. They also call death to America. And there's allies of Iran also in the Americas. Remember the same airplanes that fly ammunitions, missiles, UAVs attack drones to Damascus in Syria, to Beirut in Lebanon, to the Houthis, can also fly to Venezuela, to Caracas, way closer to U.S. itself. So the Houthis are a threat, and this is a good beginning. Uh, it's a good place to start with. I want to talk a little bit about these Iranian strikes there over in northern Iraq this week that killed several civilians. In what way does all of that kind of factor into the Israel-Hamas war? Well, in my opinion, it has no direct uh, significance. Uh, Iran needed to retaliate to the attack on the memorial uh, ceremony on January 3rd uh, since uh, for Qasem Soleimani, uh, and they retaliated to save face, and that's fine internally. They're also sending Israel a message, we can attack accurately, relatively accurately, uh, hundreds of miles away with ballistic missiles, and that's why we saw threats from Tehran, public signs in Hebrew, letting us know the shelters are not enough. This is a quote. The shelters are not enough. Prepare your coffins. It's a signal to Israel, be prepared for an attack from Iran. And my last question for you here, this deal between Israel and Hamas that has now led to medication being brought over to the hostages, is it likely that that is going to work out? I know it's kind of hard to answer. You'd need a crystal ball to kind of determine that, but there's obviously concern there that Hamas could take some of the medication, could take all of the medication. Is it likely that this deal is going to work out? Well, again, looking into my crystal ball, uh, I might, it, I think it will. It, it, it surely, uh, I mean, it could. 
Uh, I think that because I think Hamas is using diplomatic efforts to prevail a false message that they're reliable, that they're trustable, that we can reach a, reach a diplomatic agreement with them in our Western eyes. And I think uh, although, I mean, every support uh, to the hostages is will get my blessing, uh, I personally know uh, a couple of people that are held by Hamas since October 7th, uh, personal friends of mine. So anything that we can get to them is, of course, great. But I think we shouldn't fall into the trap of Hamas uh, using this as propaganda as we want to be part of the diplomatic world. We want to be part of the discussion. We have to remember this is a terrorist organization kidnapping hostages, torturing them, raping women. That's who we're speaking of, not an organization that we want to sign agreements with. All right. Abraham, thank you so much for taking the time to join us and help talk about some of the latest developments here. I say it time and time again, they happen pretty much on an hourly basis at this point. Is there anything else you want to add about any of this before I let you go? Well, uh, I keep on hearing when and seeing the media speaking of this Hamas-Israel 2023 war. Uh, and as we're uh, in 2024 already, I would like to remind everyone this is not Hamas Israel. Hezbollah has been fighting us since October 8th, basically, uh, in the north. Hezbollah from the north, Hamas from the south. Hezbollah has the support of the whole Shiite axis behind them. And we have both fronts that we're fighting simultaneously. And I think that's the situation that the whole world should uh, understand is happening right now. It's all very true. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us here and help break all of that down. We appreciate it. My pleasure.